coming up on the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. The next day, um, I went and did my colon hydrotherapy thing. They weighed me. I did the one-hour session. They weighed me again. I dropped 10 pounds of impacted fecal material in one one one-hour session. And the record at that time in 2011, one lady had dropped 27 pounds of impacted fecal material in one colon hydrotherapy session. So, whoa. So do I believe in it? Yeah, you should get that out. I mean, that lady had the si- about the, a medium-sized dog fall out of her butt full of waste, funk, and nasty gunk and junk. So what are you, those that are listening, how much do you have carrying around in there? I'm here to tell you, if you're an intelligent person, an intelligent system, you want to be smart about this and you want to clean that crap out of there, like literally. And, um, and you just start feeling better. So by the end of the first week, I dropped 11 pounds. Hello, and welcome to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. I'm Brian Grin, and I'm here to give you actionable tips to get your body back to what it once was 5, 10, even 15 years ago. Each week, I'll give you an in-depth interview with a health expert from around the world to cut through the fluff and get you long-term sustainable results. This week, I interviewed podcast host and CEO of chemicalfreebody.com, Tim James. We discussed Tim's core four secrets to health, the importance of purified restructured water, along with Tim's friend's ability to overcome cancer, the power of detoxing and gut health, colon hydrotherapy, and his experience with Hippocrates Health Clinic. This was an interesting interview with Tim. He shared a lot of insight as to how he went plant-based and how it helped him heal. And I think you'll get a lot of value out of this. So enjoy the podcast and thanks so much for listening. All right. Welcome to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. My name is Brian Grin, and I have CEO, founder of chemicalfreebody.com, Tim James. Welcome to the show. Hey, Brian. Thanks for having me today, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah. Where are you coming from, Tim? I meant to ask. Well, I'm originally from Eastern Oregon. Uh, That's kind of pretty much up in the mountains. Uh, Redneck. Um, Right now, I live uh, in Canby, which is about 35 minutes south of downtown Portland. Mm. Oregon. So crazy town. I'm sure it is. I've been there once for, I'm a big golfer, Bannon Dunes. I don't know if you're familiar with Bannon mm-hmm. Dunes. I'm sure you yeah. are. <laughs> um, so I've been up that way once, but I'm sure it's beautiful. Well, um, yeah, Oregon is still beautiful, but you know, the city is not so much. Okay. You know, it's like, there's, it's, it's crazy, dude. And a lot, every, every year it's just getting worse and worse. We have, it's like, it's the town of urine and feces and needles and masks and mandates and crazy organizations really? wow. running around tearing stuff down. There's there's garbage and trash in the streets. There's tent people living in tents everywhere. Hmm. Um, it is it's really sad yeah. actually. It used to be the city of roses. Now it's the city of um, of you know corruption and and it's just obvious that um, you know things aren't working. We have really bad infrastructure. Uh, it's hmm. been that way for a long time and. You know, infrastructure is the number one common denominator for public health, and it's not being really looked at that much by, you know, obviously people in power. Otherwise, they would have fixed it a long time ago. And a lot of people don't like to think about putting, I guess, putting money into infrastructure because it's a slow play. But the reality is, is that we've done it before in the late 1800s when we had urine and feces in the streets and um, the women's labor movement fought for that and got the plumber and the sanitation worker to clean all that stuff up. And through that infrastructure, they eliminated uh, by the mid 40s, we had eliminated 97, 98 percent of all infectious diseases because we cleaned up the environment that we lived in. Right. So we have to kind of get back to that because the infrastructure today in the United States is like a D minus. We are heading into third world status. Um, And the unfortunate thing that I found out is that, you know, even if the lawmakers pass an infrastructure bill, it takes 10 years to get it off the ground because of all the red tape and the corruption. So even, even other countries that we know are, are more, more corrupt, like China or, or, or Canada is an example, it only takes them two years to get a project off. So if somebody is like, oh, we're going to fix roads and bridges and the water system today, it's going to be 10 years before it gets off the ground. And then by 10 years, we have more inflation and it's going to be twice the amount of cost to fix it, mm. plus the delay. So we've got some major issues. And I think that's why it's so important to have a, um, we take care of our own health, become our own doctor. We learn to self heal. And then we unite as working people and rise up again and and get our freedoms back. Yeah. Well said. Um, well for the people who haven't heard of you, uh, I know you have a, your podcast host, which we're going to do. I'm going to come on your podcast in a few weeks here, but, uh, health hero show it's called. 
and um, maybe tell us a little bit about how you your backstory and then how you how you started the podcast and your company, Chemical Free Body. Sure. Yeah. So, like I said, I grew up over in Eastern Oregon on a cattle and hay farm, pretty much redneck, um, hunting and fishing. And um, my best friend was like a rodeo star, literally. <laughs> and then <laughs> I decided I decided to um, uh, play baseball. It was like, should I do rodeo or baseball? Rodeo or baseball? I elected to do baseball. Thank God, it's way safer. Um, actually, I had a friend oh, of mine yeah. who uh, broke his neck and became a paraplegic uh, doing bareback riding. So. Um, wow. you know, it's a tough sport. Not that you can't get hurt in baseball, but I mean, it does hurt when somebody hits you with a 90 mile an hour fastball in the back. Don't get me wrong, but, uh, at least my back wasn't broken. So, um, I did baseball, played baseball at a high level for 30 years. Um, considered myself an athlete and, uh, you know, was committed to my body and, you know, trying to perform well and doing everything I could to perform at higher levels to compete. And, uh, you know, but then after that, you know, fast forward to age 37, I was, 42 pounds overweight. I had developed a huge patch of eczema on my knee that was cracking and bleeding. Eventually that led to my elbow, both elbows getting it. I had another skin issue on my shoulder that was just kind of weird. Um, I had some doctors like inject it with like cortisone or something and ate. It was like fat growing. It was really weird. It was like bubbling up on my shoulder and then they ate it away. But then there was like a dent and then it was like a purple look to it, you know? And I'm like, okay, that's done. And then a few months later, boop, 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 three more of them popped up around it. And I'm thinking, oh man, what if this stuff happens on my face? So I'm, I'm freaked out because I don't like needles and I don't like any of that stuff. And I, who, I mean, who wants to get cut, right? Or stabbed um, yeah. or in, jabbed. So anyway, um, uh, that just kept getting worse. Then I got acid reflux really bad. I was eating Tums and Rolades 24 seven for years because of my acid reflux and GERD, whatever you want to call it. And um, then it got worse. And finally on a, um, well, then I started bleeding rectally. So for about two and a half years, um, every time I pooped, the blood would come out. It would be followed by blood. So that's why my, for those of you who can't see us, they're just listening. Um, my shirt says love when you poop because it used to be a very painful experience for me. And once or twice a day, I had to go to the, the bathroom and on a scale of one to 10, one being enjoyable and 10 completely painful. I was a six or a seven on the pain scale. So it was a very painful process just to do a normal activity of daily living, just, you know, evacuate the bowels and, and then followed by blood. So mm -hmm. I look at it and there's blood. I'm like, Whoa, I hope that goes away. And then I just, you know, I went to the doctors. They wanted me to go on Prilosec, different medications. Um, I never did those things because I just looked at them. They were really weird to me. I grew up on a farm. I was in nature. I was in the woods. We had a garden. I just, I don't know, Prilosec. It just sounded like an alien or something, just weird stuff. I mean, I look at these bottles and pills and I couldn't even pronounce the stuff or you'd look it up and side effects were 37 feet long. And I was like, you know what? I've already got enough problems. I don't want more problems. Mm -hmm. So luckily I stayed away from that stuff, but I didn't know how to fix myself. I was still lost and confused and following along with the herd society and what parents and grandparents had done. No, it was their fault. They're good folks. They love me, but they were just bought into the societal conditioning as well. So fast forward, um, I'm on a, a plane flight to Peru with my wife on a vacation just south of Ecuador. It's a place called Tumbes, and I've doubled over in pain. Um, her dad was with me. He was a medical doctor that ran one of the largest uh, clinics in Lima, Peru. And um, he said, we got to get you to the hospital. You need emergency surgery. I'm like, what? I'm literally bent over at a 90 degree angle uh, walking. I can't walk erect. Wow, wow. And we just missed the one plane flight out of that place by 30 minutes. And he's like, we can't wait. We have to get you. So they, we rented a van and in the middle of the night, I drove down this bumpy ass road, uh, along the coastline down to Peora, uh, along the coast of Peru. And we went to this hospital there and I look up at the examination table and the lights above me and there's bugs flying around and I'm like going, Oh man, I, I'm in trouble. Right. And I can't even use my health insurance down here. I paid into that sucker my whole life. And I can't <laughs> use it. I was pissed. And, um, so he had him dope me up. I should have went into surgery, but he didn't want him to do surgery there because it was, you know, kind of a podunk place. And, and, uh, he wanted me to go to his surgeons. So he had him dope me up. They threw me in a commercial plane flight, which you're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I flew into Lima and then took a taxi cab and I got out of the wow. taxi and they put me right on the gurney. He had everything set up and I went right into surgery and I spent the rest of my vacation in recovery. And then my wife wheelchaired me back into the United States, um, to come back on time with our tickets and everything. So, what did I learn from that lesson? Well, number one, I don't ever want to get surgery again because I realized that my life was completely out of control. And, you know, thank God for the surgeons that, that did what they were able to do to save my ass, uh, literally, because, um, you know, that's where surgery shines. You get 
shot with a gun. There's a, a crisis critical stuff. Boom, man, these surgeons, they do an awesome job. It's the palliative care. It's for the, you know, the chronic stuff, the heart disease, the cancers, the diabetes. They, they just don't know what they're doing. Um, unfortunately, most of them. Um, that's been my experience in the last 11 years, um, helping, you know, over 600 people in a private one-on-one -on -one coaching setting and coaching thousands around the globe. So it just is what it is. Right. So, um, from that, um, the other thing that I learned was that my poor health didn't affect just me. It affects everybody else around me. So I felt really bad because her dad was a medical doctor. He'd never had a vacation in 30 years. Like <laughs> never, this was his first vacation. Where does he end up back in the hospital? taking care of Tim because Tim didn't know how to take care of Tim. So now what happens right after that, a couple years later, I still don't know what to do. I'm still buying these books, high fat, low fat, high protein, low protein, high carb, low carb, five meals a day. I'm trying everything. Sometimes they work a little bit. It wouldn't. I tried juicing. That felt good for 30 days, but then I stopped juicing. I was doing too much sugar, like carrots and beets and that kind of stuff. I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just didn't have the education. So then my friend Charles gets chronic le lymphocytic leukemia. This is like a blood cancer, supposedly incurable. This was like 2010 in the fall. He gets diagnosed. He was just going in to get an insurance examination to get some life insurance. And they're like, oh, sorry, we ain't giving you none. You got cancer. Mm. That was a wake up call for him. And he dropped the bomb to me. And then to me, I was like, oh, no, because my experience was in my life that you get cancer, you're toast. You know, my grandma died of brain cancer. Um, my aunt died of melanoma, skin cancer, and I believe lung cancer. And then... Um, uh, my, um, friend Kalei, uh, Mahoy on my baseball team at age 40, he had actually diagnosed with stomach cancer and he was like six pack, eight pack abs looked like an underwear model, very fit, but that took him down. We thought it was probably cause he chewed tobacco and it trickled down his esophagus into his stomach and, you know, mm -hmm. gave himself cancer from the, from the chewing tobacco. So that kind of made sense. But, you know, bottom line was, is my, my, my life, what I experienced, if you get cancer, you die. So I was like really sad because this is a good friend of mine. Our children had played together and, and Charles looked at me and he said, Hey man, I, they don't have anything for me uh, except wait around and hope that they come up with a cure before I die. And at the end, they'll put me on some experimental drug and I don't want to, I, I, I I'm an entrepreneur. I like, I have to take my own destiny in my own hands. And uh, so I'm going to try to heal myself. So I'm going to go to this place called the Hippocrates health Institute. It's in West Palm Beach, Florida. They're an alternative natural detox and nutrition clinic. Been around about 65 years. Originally started by a gal named Ann Wigmore, who healed herself of stage four colon cancer with herbs and grass juice and stuff like that. Hmm. So he tells me about this and says, hey, will you go with me to support me? I want to go this. I need your help. And I was like, dude, whatever you need. Like I was, I didn't even hear what he said, literally, except just I'm going here and I want you to go with me to support me. And I'm like, all in. I mean, he could have said, I'm going to the moon. I would have said, sure, because mm -hmm. I wanted to support my buddy. But he was smart because he didn't tell me what it was going to be like <laughs> until we were on the plane flight there. He's like, oh, yeah, by the way. So we're flying there. Literally January 1st, 2011, we fly into uh, West Palm Beach, Florida, to go to the Pocket Health Institute. And he says, um, oh, Tim, by the way, there's no meat. There's no dairy. There's no salt. There's no sugar. There's no, there's nothing cooked over 115 degrees. There's no vinegar. And I'm like, what do you mean? No meat? Like I'm the redneck. Like we hunted and fished. The motto was if it flies, it dies. It's brown. It's down. We hunted chuckers and pheasants and duck and, you know, and deer and elk and all this stuff. And I'm freaked out because my mind, I am conditioned to think that you absolutely have to have animal protein to, to live, to build muscle and to, to thrive and mm -hmm. to be a man. It was kind of woven into the fabric over there. So uh, a little freaked out, but I continued on. Uh, obviously, I was there with my friend and I focused on him. Hey, your friend's got cancer. It's quit worrying about meat. You've had salads before. We used to have salad bar in high school once a week. It'd have hamburger on it, but you know the <laughs> crumbles, but the rest of it was there. And I like salads and fresh stuff anyway. So I was like, okay, forget about it. So what ended up happening was, is we go there and day one, my acid reflux was gone, which was pretty cool. Um, by day three, I wasn't feeling that good. I was actually going through a detox symptoms. Like uh, they call it doing surgery without a knife. So what had happened was, or Hertz reaction. So they changed my environment. Okay. I went from the standard American diet to basically eating like a wild creature. They gave me purified restructured water um, with lemon and lime juice in it. I had green juices twice a day. Wheatgrass shots twice a day. 
um, alkaline foods, sprout, sprouted nuts, sprouted seeds, sprouted grains, sprouted beans, uh, just lots of, you know, avocados, and fresh vegetables, all organic, nothing processed, just all made with love in the kitchen there. And they have wonderful kitchen staff. And, um, I was literally freaked out about the food, um, like literally, um, uh, but you know, after by Wednesday, I couldn't even eat anything. I wasn't even hungry and it blew my mind because I was like, how could I not be hungry? Because usually for me, I'm like a tapeworm, man. It was like breakfast, lunch, and dinner, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Whatever my kids didn't eat, I'd finish their plate. My wife didn't eat, I'd finish her plate. And um, I had this insatiable appetite, but I didn't realize it was because the foods I was eating were so devoid of nutrients that my body was starving for nutrients on a cellular level and telling me to go eat and eat and eat. And I was doing it, but there was I could never satisfy my need on a cellular level for nutrition because it just wasn't in the food. Uh, years later, I found out that 85% of the nutrition's farmed out of the soil. And that's why we have to supplement today to replace that. So anyway, we go to this class on, uh, called internal awareness and this doctor comes out and he's like jacked and he's got freaking he's built dude. And he looked great. And, every, and the funny thing was, is the people that worked there that have been there 10, 20 years, they looked about 10, 20 years younger than the rest of the population. Their age, like this dude, I thought he was maybe 40 and he had just turned 50 that day. It was his birthday. It was Dr. Scott uh, Josephson. Mm. Um, his wife, and found out him and his wife were bodybuilders and he hadn't had meat in 10 years. So this is the first guy that shattered my whole thing about um, the meat myth. And I'll just say, if your people are listening, I don't want you to shut down and turn off just because you, I'm not going to try to tell you, Hey, you can't eat meat for the rest of your life. That's I'm just telling you what happened when I went there. Okay. Mm. I, I, I was the hunt and fishing dudes. So this was just a healing diet. I totally recommend it. You know, um, people can live just fine with a little bit of meat. It's just people are eating too much of it, right? So, and in what? the wrong combinations with food. Right. Okay. So we go to this class and he starts showing us from the time we eat food until the time it exits the body, what happens. It was very educational. And the, the, the thing he was trying to impress on us is that the average person, Brian, has about six to 12 pounds of impacted fecal material lodged in the colon. And we have to get it out if we want to be well, because the colon is supposed to be a waste removal system not a storage tank. And, um, so I was just like, Holy goodness. Like, I can't even believe that's the truth, but wow, it kind of makes sense. And he was explaining why. And then he said, you, we want you guys to do tomorrow. You're, you're going to log in you're going to go do colon hydrotherapy. And then we'll show you. And then they actually, <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. Then they taught us how to do enemas. Like they were doing demos right there. Mm -hmm. Um, they weren't actually inserting the tube and everything, but they were just kind of showing you laying on the side how to do it. Cause every room, everybody gets an enema bag when you get there. Mm. So you basically become your own body mechanic and they show you how to become your own doctor and start taking care of yourself. And you take the car, your body into the shop and you start cleaning up the mess. Now as convincing as he was and as healthy as he looked, there's still no way I was going to do the colon hydrotherapy thing. So for those listening, if you're not sure what that is, because I wasn't, you sit on a tube rectally and water gently goes in and out of your colon for about an hour and it cleans up your colon. And that's about the, the extent of it. Um, if you go online and look it up, you're not going to, you're going to get scared tactics. Like it's going to perforate your colon and all this stuff. People die. It's not the case. I answer all those questions actually in episode 38 of my show when I had a act one certified instructor level colon hydrotherapist, Rebecca Harder, AKA gastro girl. Yeah, I, I, there's actually a place not too far from where I live outside Chicago here. I've, I've, I haven't been here in, in years, but I, I, I did it a couple of times. And I, yes, it was definitely a different experience, but not unpleasant, I would say. I would say. Yeah, well, it can be a little a little painful because yeah. of the gas and stuff oh, as it's cleaning right. you up. But, you know, it's like it's not what's bad. more painful, a little, a little some gas pains as you're cleaning out the engine or, you know, chemotherapy yeah. or open heart surgery. You know, it's just like it just kind of makes sense if the if the truck isn't running right, the tractor isn't running right, the engine's plugged up. You got to flush out the transmission fluid, flush out the engine, put good fuel in, new spark plugs, new fuel filter, and that's basically what we were doing at the institute in a to the human body. So um, he, I wasn't going to do the deal, this colon hydrotherapy thing, but he was smart. He so he showed us four videos, three videos of people on the standard American diet, and one person these virtual colonoscopies of somebody that been on the Hippocrates lifestyle for quite a while. The first person was like a 24 year old female with thrush, which is like a yeast infection. I mean, I think she had, um, um, she had something else anyway, inside of her colon was all white and yellow and weird. It just looked nasty. Then they went to a 65 year old male with colon cancer and parasites. And it was all black and nasty in there and, and white worms crawling around. 
And the doctor turned around and said, hey, over 50 percent of you have parasites. We're not talking about these tapeworms, hookworms and pinworms, these bigger ones that you can see. There's microscopic parasites that live in your blood as well. And they're eating your food, drinking your drink, urinating and defecating in you and creating more acid in what should be an alkaline system. And then laying thousands and hundreds of thousands of eggs, and having ch children in you. And I'm just like, what? Mm -hmm. So and, you know, this isn't a third world, world affair. Right. And the more densely populated area, the, the more it goes up. So, if you know, somebody lives out in Podunk, nowhere town, you have a lower chance of having it than somebody that lives um, in New York because everybody's touching everything closer together. So anyway, so now I'm like, whoa, I'm kind of freaking out. And then a uh, third one was like a 45 year old female with breast cancer and col colitis or something. Her gut was jacked up. It was all black, nasty in there and gross. And then they went to the person that had been on the living food diet and the Hippocrates thing. And you could see the colon was pink and the blood vessels and everything was nice. There was brown waste matter in there, but the, the terrain, Brian, was completely different. And it was those virtual colonoscopy videos that where it clicked for me that this is an inside job. This is an inside game. If I can change my internal terrain, I'm going to change how I look and I feel on, on the outside, period. And I knew it. And so the next day, um, I went and did my colon hydrotherapy thing. They weighed me. I did the one-hour session. They weighed me again. I dropped 10 pounds of impacted fecal material in one one-hour session. And the record at that time in 2011, one lady had dropped 27 pounds of impacted fecal material in one colon hydrotherapy session. So... Whoa. So do I believe in it? Yeah, you should get that out. I mean, that lady had the si about the, a medium sized dog fall out of her butt full of waste, funk and nasty gunk and junk. So what are you those that are listening? How much do you have carrying around in there? I'm here to tell you, if you're an intelligent person, an intelligent system, you want to be smart about this and you want to clean that crap out of there, like literally. And um, and you just start feeling better. So by the end of the first week, I dropped 11 pounds. Um, my energy shot through the roof. In fact, I looked at Charles and I said, Hey dude, do you feel as good as I do? I said, my arms are literally tingling with energy. My mental clarity's back. And I was, I was living in the fog dude for like years for just trudging my way through work and pounding coffees and just things, you know, you know uh, drinks to kind of keep me going and, and just tired. And it was just like, I am back, baby. I said, Charles, we've discovered the fountain of youth, man. This is freaking like, this is literally mm -hmm. like, like you read about stories about the fountain of youth. I'm like, this is it. Like it's nature. It's like, frick, I knew it. You know, I'm from the, I'm from, from Eastern Oregon. I'm from the forest like this. I knew it. This is so cool. And um, I said, I can't believe this, but when I go home, I'm going to give up all meat except for bacon. I'm going to join you in this quest and you were going to heal yourself a cancer brother. And he said, yeah, I, I think I am. And we came back, we followed the protocols and within two and a half years. Um, he had healed himself. His white blood cell count was back in a normal range. He was able to see his son graduate high school and he went on to uh, do father son weekend and his son just sold him a home. <laughs> Son's now a real estate agent. Um, pretty cool. Um, and my buddy's still alive. He got into guitar. We start, we play guitar together from now from time to time. And, um, you know, That's I still cool. have my wow. friend and I was able to heal up all my, my problems too. And, and now share that this message with other folks. And, um, this was in 2000. 11, 11. Okay. And now since then, um, with the colon hydrotherapy, I'm curious, do you do this? Is this every, an annual thing every six months or? Yeah. Yeah. I'll do it once or twice a year. Yeah. Just, okay. just for maintenance, but see what we've done is we've developed, um, we have a product that we brought over from India, my formulator, Dr. Scott Treadway. Um, you know, this, this is one of the issues. Like I healed myself. And one of the foundational things that I teach is you got to do these two green juices a day. They told us at the take it home program, if you're not doing two green juices a day to flood the body with nutrients for what's missing in the soil, you're not on the Hippocrates protocol. Do not expect the same results. And I just, I just knew it rang true for me. So I came home and I did it because we have to replace that 85% of nutrients that's missing. Cause most people are walking around Brian on 15% fuel and they don't even know it, or they're taking multivitamins or something that are synthetic. The vitamin industry is really, uh, it needs help. Um, uh, like big time, but so, um, I stuck to that two green juice a day thing. Um, I kept moving forward and then, um, eventually we found this product, this, there's this formula, we call it gut detox and it's, it's three fruits and they gently micro cleanse your small and large intestine and keep it clean, but without diarrhea and without pulling out your good bacteria. Very important. And it has like 37 side benefits. It's a very, uh, balancing formula what's for the, the name body. of your product called gut de detox it's called gut detox oh, so, so it's, and not I know, the it's not the product right behind you right 
Uh, no, this is this is green 85. This is our green juice replacement. And this is our, our turmeric 100, our anti-inflammatory uh, formula. But um, yeah, gut detox, because um, I know, I mean, I'm pretty convincing on the colon hydrotherapy thing, but I know a lot of people still aren't going to do it. I've been doing this long enough. I know there's people listening right now are like, I ain't doing that. I don't care what he says. So that's why we have that formula to help you do it. So over a 15 day period, they can take three capsules in the morning and night and very gently without having to run to the bathroom all the time. They can work, they can play, they can play sports, they can travel, and they can do the detox as on the run, basically, and do it very gently. Mm -hmm. And um, so we've been doing that because we have to clean up that pathway of elimination. It, the, the intestinal lining, the intestinal tract, I believe, is the driving engine of the body. And um, it's very important if it's plugged up to get it cleaned up. Gotcha. And, uh, and since then, 2010, um, what's your diet like? Well, you know, for, um, it works so well. Um, I was actually, uh, plant-based hundred percent, uh, for the first eight and a half years. And then I decided, you know, through my research, I was like, well, and the reason why, you know, I, cause I was questioning everything. And I said, Dr. Clement, I was like, he was one of the directors there at the Institute. I told him, I said, Hey man, like I don't eat that crappy food, the meats from the, right, you know, the grocery right. stores. Like we raise our own Hereford cattle. We don't squirt hormones and and antibiotics into them like they do at a lot of these places um right. and they put nitrates and nitrates into the meat so i mean people most people don't know it, but probably over 40 percent of the meat in a grocery store if you were to walk in there and it didn't have nitrates or nitrates in it the meat would be gray in color mm. nobody in their right mind would pick up that meat and eat it but you got about a 40 percent chance the meat you're buying in a grocery store is gray and it's just trick they tricked you you know it's it's a trick yeah. So, and they use it because they, they got to sell their stuff. So none of that crap. And, and I said, we, you know, hunt deer and elk and all that stuff. He said, well, Tim, uh, where did the animals go eat at night? And I was like, well, um, they go into the farmer's fields. He's like, okay, do those farmers spray their crops? And I was like, well, yeah, some of them do. He said, even if they don't, there's a farmer 30 miles away that does. And there's this thing called wind. And all these, these chemicals and, you know, 74% of our freaking rainwater today has glyphosate in it, which is a, it's like a digestive shutdown molecule. Just ter it's terrible on us. It's like it's Roundup. Right? It's a, it's yeah, it's Roundup, right? Yeah. And I sprayed that crap. My dad had me spray that crap on the weeds and stuff. We didn't know. So, um, you know, so all, all this stuff in there and, and he's like, you know, bioaccumulate. So every time that deer or elk takes a bite, all those toxins, they go in and they bioaccumulate in the fat and the muscle tissue and the cells. They don't leave. So everything, every little bit of chemicals that animals ate in its life, when you take a bite of it, you're, you're getting it. So, And then in the sea, it's even worse because not only do you have the bioaccumulation per species, but you have the biomagnification as the larger creatures are eating up the food chain. You start the plankton, you work your way up to you know, the, the salmon or the a bluefin tuna, and those things are just loaded with toxins. Mm. So but it's unregulated. It's considered wild foods. They don't, they don't test that stuff. But I tell people like, don't take my word for it. Type these three words into your browser. When you're done listening to the show today, umbilical cord chemical, umbilical cord chemical. And you'll see the studies that I've seen going back to 2005, that every single child and young mother, when they test the umbilical cord blood, supposedly the healthiest people on the planet, um, they're finding 250 of the 400 toxic chemicals they were looking for and 180 cause cancer in humans and 212 cause developmental and brain disorders. This is very well documented. So we are literally born polluted. And the older we are, the more time we've had to bioaccumulate these toxins in our blood, fat, and muscle tissue. So here at Chemical Free Body, our mission is to bring awareness to this, be serious about it, not freak out about it, but learn where this crap is getting into your system. Stop it from coming in. Use certain measures and products and things and lifestyle choices to get it out and keep it out. And you'd be surprised people's immune systems just, they, you know, you get the toxic chemicals out of your cells, you flood your cells with the good stuff, the nutrition, and then you, um, and you eliminate stress. That is a recipe for getting your life back. And that's exactly what I did. And, um, so I added meat back in for a little bit, just for maybe, uh, about a year to see how I'd feel. And, and I, I didn't feel as good having as much of it. So now what I'll do is I'm mostly plant-based. But, you know, if you caught some salmon or smoked it yourself and gave me a piece, I might eat it. Um, I might have when we pick chanterelle mushrooms or morel mushrooms in the seasons, I might make an omelet with them. I just don't freak out about it, but I'm mostly plant-based. Got it. And um, 
what would you say a typical protocol for someone that, you know, like you mentioned, maybe has eaten the standard American diet for the past 30 years and they want to sort of reclaim their health? Well, I would probably share with them our core four secrets because a lot of people that come to us, you know, they want to change things, but people are so busy today and they're so stressed out. It's hard for them to do things and remember to do them and keep doing them. So um, a lot of people are like, well, I want to change my diet. That's, that's usually a big, heavy lift for a lot of people, or they want to get into the gym and exercise. Well, it's kind of hard to do when you don't have the energy already, right? Otherwise, you'd already be there. Mm -hmm. So we don't tell them, I say, look, you're, you don't, you're, you're getting ahead of yourself. Don't worry about changing your food or you're working or working out yet. You don't even have the foundation in place. So what we do is we teach the foundation, which is, you know, here it is, core secret number one. Um, drink half your body weight in liquid ounces of purified, restructured water daily. So if, you know, I just told you and shared with you guys that every child being born today is born polluted and it's getting worse, right? So our water, our water, need, our water needs cleaned up, right? There's water in pristine lakes 1,500 miles into the interior where they're, the two and two and a half inch fish are turning into hermaphrodites. They have both male and female organs. Why? because the high amounts of estrogen mimicking plastics in the water today, these microplastics are so pervasive that they're disrupting hormonal imbalance our hormonal balance in our system and other in the fishes and the amphibians. So we have to purify our water today, not filtered water, not like, you know, out of your freaking refrigerator, you need a purification system. So best thing to do is buy one. They're about 1500 to 2000 bucks and boom, now you've got, your body's mostly made of water. So doesn't it make sense to put the badass water in your system? Yes. Now on the cheap, you can just buy gallon glass jars and pack it and your local grocery store. will have at least single purified water where it's reverse osmosis distillation or deionization. One of those three models. And those will pull out about 90% of the contaminants. You can pack it for 25 to 44 cents a gallon. That's the cheap way to go. Um, now, if you're on city tap water, you have to get your water restructured. OK, this is not an option, in my opinion, and we don't this is not an option because when those high pressure pipes in the city when the water goes through those, it takes those malt water clusters and four or five a cluster and gets them like 20, 25. They're like bowling balls trying to go through a chain link fence, the bowling ball being the water molecule, the chain link fence, your intestinal lining. Mm -hmm. So we want to restructure it and get them small like sand. And when you throw sand against the chain link fence, most of it goes through. I noticed a massive improvement in my health and my vitality. And I actually get high on water now once I got my water restructured. And so what I do is I run mine through a triple purifier and then I run it through a machine that restructures it, alkalizes it, which is great. And then it also charges it with molecular hydrogen. So I'm like high on water now. Mm -hmm. And this gal, Danusha, got me hooked up on it. Um, I used to give out her email, but people can't spell Danusha and they blow up our support line on it. So we... Created, if anybody's interested, if they want to get a water machine from Danusha, it's um, uh, mypurifiedwater.com. So that's where I got mine, mypurifiedwater.com. We built a landing page for her just so I didn't have to give out an email and follow up with 100 people. But um, so that's number one. You want to get your water right because your body's mostly water and um, your colon needs it. Um, this is why you have so much impact with fecal material is because the colon is the first place the body goes for water. Mm -hmm. um, if it needs it for the blood or lymphatic system or your brain. And we're literally smarter. Like if, if we have more water, if we don't have enough water in our system, it could be the difference between finding our keys or hunting around for our keys for 10 to 15 minutes. It literally lowers our IQ. Um, water is the lubricant of life. If you have joint pain, inflammation in the body, it's water. I, it is just like it's pure gold. It is the lubricant of life. So I can't say enough about water and getting your water right. And if you're going to consume water today, tomorrow, next week, and next year, let's get our water right. Let's get it purified and restructured. And you can also be high on water. And when you get your water like that, you're actually going to get about eight to nine times more absorption of the nutrients that you're eating and that you're getting from supplementation. So it's a, a it's such a good thing to get your water right. Core secret number, and 90, again, 95% of people are not doing this. So we have a national crisis on our hands called cellular dehydration. All right. So hopefully I made a big point about that. Now, the next one's real easy. Core secret number two, less than 4% of the population is doing this. And that is chew your food until liquefied. We have teeth for a reason. They're there to masticate, and break our foods down. But more importantly, we have two ducts in our upper mouth and four ducts in the lower mouth that secrete these enzymes, amylase and lipase. These break down our starches and our fats. 
that's where digestion happens. It's in the gut, but it's preloaded in the mouth. So if you just inhale your food like Garfield, like I used to, you're not loading these necessary enzymes that are going to break the food down in the gut and you're going to get fermentation and gut rot. You're going to be destroying your, those little hair like structures in your, in your small intestine called villi over time. Now, once or twice, shoot me, no big deal. But every day when you don't chew your food, well, it's a big problem. So mom was right. You need to chew her food. And Dr. Gabriel cousins, who's about 80 and can do 30 pull-ups, um, medical doctor, uh, he's super healthy. He said that when you masticate, you're actually stimulating meridian points in your teeth and you can hold your hat on this one. You can upregulate your serotonin, your happy juice by up to 500%. So how many people are depressed today? Kind of bummed out, bad mood, and they're trying to buy serotonin uh, products or do things. Just chew your freaking food and you'll get happier. Like it's you, you have a, your body is a natural serotonin making device. Basically, you just have to move your teeth. Yeah. All right. And um, it's really important for jaw strength and stuff like that, too. So, all right. Um, number three, um, avoid liquids with meals. This is a hard one when you go to the restaurant because the waiters and waitresses always want to give you, what would you like to drink? Would you like some water? Would you like some wine? Would you like some beer? Would you like some coffee? And because they want to upsell you. And um, it all sounds good. But the reality is, is if you work that hard and you got your, you chewed really well and you flooded your food with these digestive enzymes, and then you drink the best purified Re, you know, restructured water or beer or wine or apple juice or green juice or whatever, you're not going to dilute those digestive enzymes that you want. How so long should you in. wait? Sorry, to, how long should you wait? We recommend rule of thumb is stop drinking liquids about an hour before you eat and then wait two hours after you're done eating and then drink a lot of liquids again. Hmm. That's kind of the rule of thumb. And we've, you know, we've, like I said, I benchmarked this on 600 people. Less than 2% of the population is, is doing this. So again, oh, yeah. massive room of improvement. And what's it cost? Nothing. It doesn't cost nothing. Okay, last one. We added this one later. Core secret number four, less than 1% of the population is doing it. Would you agree, Brian, that we live in a stressed out world? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And before you know COVID and all that stuff, it was still way stressed out. So the reality is, is we're in stress mode, even if you don't think you are. So when you sit down to eat, if your body is in fight or flight, even if you don't think you are, you probably are. Your, your nervous system thinks that that saber-toothed tiger is trying to get you. When that happens, the blood leaves your organ systems to go to your extremities, your arms, legs, hands, and feet to fight or flight, to run, to get out of there. And you're not going to digest your food well. So we recommend one to two minutes of breath work. Mm. And I don't care how you do it. Just take big breaths for a minute or two. You know, in, it could be like this, in through the nose. And pause at the top, then release out to the mouth. This is just an example. Pause at the bottom with your lungs completely empty and hold. Back in through the nose. Suspend the breath and release out through the mouth. Just being grateful for your food, grateful for the people in your life, grateful for your opportunity to just create and design your life manifest things and contribute and be grateful. Right. And just do that for like a minute or two. What you'll notice is that that blood will rush back into organ systems. And now you can digest your food together better. Here's the other thing. If you're stressed out, you can use the same technique multiple times during the day. You can do it in the car at lunch breaks. You can go into the bathroom. Um, some people feel embarrassed for some reason to do breath work in front of other people. So just go to the bathroom. Go to the closet, go somewhere and just, just be mindful and just take a few deep breaths and detach, relax. And um, it's really important because stress is really killing us. And um, we get so caught up with trying to make ends meet and doing all these things and taking care of kids, taking care of parents. And uh, we put ourselves last and then until a wheel falls off, and we're in the hospital, and we can't take care of anybody. So we really um, are about helping people to empower themselves, and become their own doctor, learn how to self-heal um, and take responsibility for every aspect of your life. Yeah. Uh, big fan of those four principles. What would you say? I know um, we talk quite a bit about fasting on my podcast. How do you uh, implement uh, using fasting as a tool to um, help detoxify as well? Well, I will say this. I mean, I've shot episodes on it on my podcast when I, I've gone into depth. It's one of the beginning episodes, fasting, intermittent fasting and stuff. It's, um, it's we're genetically programmed to, to fast. Okay. So Let's well, let's first address some some concerns. Usually when you hear the word fasting, most people that have never experienced it, it's very foreign. 
It's very scary because it feels like you're coming from a place of lack. And let's face it. I mean, we are all there's we're using food as a dope. Okay, food, we have emotional stuff um, from childhood, our relationships, finances, work, all this stuff. And a lot of times people use uh, the food to push these emotions down. So the thought of not having them as much scares people. That's why they never get started. But here, here's the good news. Everybody listening to this is already fasting every day. When you go to bed mm-hmm. and you're sleeping, you're fasting. Okay. And then when you wake up, you eat breakfast, break fast, right? Well, hopefully after we get done talking, you won't be eating breakfast anymore because <laughs> uh, I threw that out a long time ago. So when you break fast, you're breaking actually your body's natural detoxification process. So we recommend that you um, don't eat anything until a laugh after 11 a.m. So your body has continues on with its natural detoxification process, pushing out toxins and garbage out of the body. That's why you wake up in the morning, get those clinkers in your eyes and you know, kind of get going again. Your body's pushing stuff out. So. Fasting is very important. Um, we were, we've been nomadic people for a long time. We would follow the seasons. We would, um, you know, walk for, uh, find maybe the ancestors of spinach or cabbage in a meadow. We'd eat that monolithically, that one food. Um, and then we would walk for two or three days. We wouldn't eat. We'd be looking for food again. Mm. And we would find maybe in the fall, we'd find some berries or something like that. And we'd eat that one food monolithically. But today what we do is we also have what's called improper food combining because you might have three or four different healthy foods. Maybe you've got a steak from Iowa and potatoes from Idaho, and you've got asparagus from Peru, and then you finish it off with some uh, haagen ice cream, right? Well, those different foods require different enzymes, and they digest at different speeds. And when you mix them together, a lot of times you're going to, um, you know, counterbalance these digestive enzymes, and you know you're going to go right back to fermentation and gut rot. So, fasting is important. It's very important. So the first thing step that we do is not really technically fasting, but we have people replace breakfast with liquid nourishment. So we have them take our green 85 juice formula with water. Um, if they are a little lightheaded or something, then we'll have them mix it with a nut milk to give them a little bit more. And then it becomes a complete meal replacement. Uh, we, we, we really um, uh, are really uh, big proponents of sprouted nut milk. Um, rather than just because it increases the nutrition up to 100 to 800 percent more nutrition just by sprouting that nut or seed or grain or bean, whatever you use to make that milk out of. So um, now if you're type two diabetic, anorexic or bulimic, again, this is never a permission slip to not eat, to throw up, um, especially uh, for especially the type two diabetics. It can be very dangerous. Um, so we would recommend those people go to a monolithic diet instead of like their regular breakfast, we would have them do just quinoa, maybe put some cinnamon in it, some stevia, or maybe, maybe a few berries in there, or maybe we'd have them do a green leafy salad. And then once they get well, then they could eventually eliminate that too. Once they're off their metformin or whatever, you know, other medications they are taking. Usually the type two diabetics are pretty good. They're like super monitors of their own blood sugars and stuff. I'm just curious, like what, what do you do with someone that maybe is sensitive to plants? Um, the toxins that are in plants and, um, how do you go about dealing with that? Uh, who, who, have you had people like that? Yeah. I mean, I've had people had skin conditions um, and get flare ups actually from some of the anti-nutrients that are in plants and, um, you know, especially if they're eating them raw. Um, so obviously a lot back in the okay. day, a lot of times, you know, fermentation, things like that, like you mentioned with the, you know, almonds, right. I mean, you know, as well, you know, sprouting and things like that. Okay. I get it. All right. So what I would recommend in that situation is, um, well, first off, let's look at the reason why they're having those issues in the first place is from the chemical pollution building up on their body, stress and long-term nutrient deficiencies, whether it's pet allergies, seasonal allergies or food allergies, which it sounds like that's the case. So the first thing they could do is they could go get a very comprehensive food uh, sensitivity test or food allergy test and identify which foods they should or should not eat. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. We had this uh, pastor. His name was Jim. He's up here in Vancouver, Washington. This was years ago. Um, I was invited over to this church meeting. Uh, James and Carolyn Kimball, amazing people. Um, I helped them help Carolyn heal herself, and they had just paid it forward. They started doing these these plant-based dinners once a month, and they had referred Jim to me and this other guy that had testicular cancer. I showed him what we did. They went home and did it, and they healed themselves. Well, Jim showed up to do a testimony and he said, you know, he healed himself of like stomach cancer. Uh, actually the fastest I'd ever seen was like a year and a half. So I was like, whoa, 
Um, and he wasn't following the program hundred percent. Um, but he had a great attitude. He just had a wonderful attitude about he was going to heal and he was just grateful. Just, just a great dude. But he, what was interesting, he said, not only did I heal myself of cancer, but he goes, I used to be for 30 years, I've been allergic to 20 foods. He goes, I can eat all of those foods now with zero allergies. Right. So he had rebuilt, he tore down his body that had been built with glue and paste and he rebuilt it with brick and mortar. All right. So if somebody has sensitivities to plants, number one, you want to make sure that the plants are biological. They're not sprayed. That's very important. But if you're allergic to certain plants, just get a get a, a really comprehensive um, test and find out what you can eat, can can and can eat. Mm. Go with that. And then, you know, down the road, as you build up your immune system, you could probably go back and 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 reintroduce this into your life. OK. And then how, how do you implement um, protein? Um, for people who are mainly plant-based, do you just do like the plant proteins, like pea protein and soybean and stuff? But, although soy, soy is probably not the best recommendation, huh? Yeah. So I'm kind of, um, I don't know, <laughs> I guess a pioneer on this, this thought process, because when I got home, I got, I was really into, I'm like, oh, I, cause I was still protein, protein, protein in my head. Cause I've been indoctrinated into that. So I got into the plant-based proteins. I tried to find the best ones. And I looked into sprouted ones. I was looking into fermented ones. Um, the problem with a lot of the proteins, even the plant-based ones, is a lot of them have a lot of heavy metals in them. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lab down in Texas that tested like 23 of them or something. Like it was, a, I can't remember the number. It was like 15 or 14 of them have high heavy metal contents and some other problems. So that was alarming. But besides that, let's just say it was a really good high quality. You find a good one. I am concerned about this. We don't produce, we don't promote protein powders anymore. I have a whole formula. I was going to build a protein powder and we were going to start selling it. And I know everybody buy it, but I can't in good conscience knowing what I know, do it. So what do we see right now? What's been going on in the last five years, 10 years? What are the types of clinics that we're seeing pop up? Well, there's two that I notice. Number one are fertility clinics because young couples are having a hard time getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Same problem, stress, chemical buildup lack of nutrition. And we also have all these, uh, uh, kidney dialysis clinics. I am a firm believer that the overconsumption of protein is wearing out people's kidneys. It's like when you eat all this protein all the time, it's like buying a rental car and flooring it and just going all over the place as fast as you can. You're overusing it. Now, when do human beings, and a lot of the reason why we're taking this is because a lot of people think we need protein for muscle and we just need it to have strong bodies. Well, Let's look at when do human beings put on the most muscle from the birth to the first year. We go from about seven pounds to 21 pounds. We triple in size. What should we be consuming? Mother's breast milk. What's the makeup of brother's, mother's breast milk? It's about six to eight percent high quality protein, but it's already in amino acid form. So it's pre-digested. The fats are about six to eight percent. They're already in fatty acid form and you get about 80 percent complex carbohydrates. That's roughly what it is. So um, that and then I went to Hippocrates and that's pretty much what it was there, too. It was about that same matrix. And they have people winning gold medals. They've actually had Olympic level athletes that they've helped and they've crushed it and won gold medals. Um, Venus Williams is an example. You remember her, that tennis gal that was um, she mm -hmm. was out of tennis because of lupus. And, you know, she was worth who knows, 40 million bucks at the time or whatever. She had the best doctors in the planet. She ends up at the Hippocrates Health Institute, same place that me and my buddy Charles went. And, and she was at Dr. Clement's desk. And she says, why do I feel so good? Everything you're telling me to do is the exact opposite of what all these experts that I paid to tell me to do all over the place. And um, he said, that's why it works. So she came back. She implemented the stuff, the wheatgrass, the living foods, all these things. And she won Wimbledon. I think she went and won a gold medal or something, the Olympics. Um, and um, it's still playing. So, so prioritizing, you, know, you would say prioritizing proteins, not, not up there. It's not way. even a, it's not, I think people forget things, man. It's like spinach is 19% protein, like chickpeas, you know, garbanzo beans that's made out of hummus. That's 25% protein. You know, mm -hmm. blue green algaes are the highest out of all of them. It's uh, like 54%. Um, I think green algaes are, uh, like Corella that we have in our thing is like 50, 48, something like that. So it's not about how much protein you get. It's the quality. And it's, it's and the cool thing is like the amino acids from plants and stuff, like in our juice drink, it's already in amino acid form. So your body doesn't have to labor to convert. So all that energy 
that's converting proteins to amino acids and fats to fatty acids can now be used for your think, your activities of daily living, your hands, whatever you're doing, right? So I just think there's an overconsumption of protein. All we have to do is look at the results. Kidney dialysis clinics are popping up all over the place and we need to lower it. And for those of you listening that want to build muscle, um, the guy that's on the front of my uh, homepage, uh, David Arce, CrossFit competitor, uh, owns CrossFit gym. He's a personal trainer. When what I have him do to gain muscle, we had him take his meat down and we had him drink green 85 with sprouted nut milk. It's the high quality fatty. You want to build muscle? It's the high quality fatty acids that you need to build muscle combined with weight resistance exercise and good sleep. That's how you build muscle. All right. Wow. Well, we're hitting up on almost an, almost an hour here, so we could probably keep going for a long time, but, um, <laughs> <It's easy>. <laughs> <laughs> um, where's the best place for people to find you? Um, best place is at chemicalfreebody.com on our website. And, uh, if people want to try our products, we have quite a few of them. So I always just tell people like, go to the products tab, go down to savings bundles. That way you can get a discount. We have, you know, you start jumpstart bundle. You want to stick your toes in the water. If you want to go all in, do what I do. I do the total energy and detox bundle every month. That's my personal regiment. Plus I take the turmeric product and, um, uh, or just pick a, pick a bundle that fits your budget and your, what resonates with you. And then at checkout, um, if they type in the code, get lean, Mm-hmm. Thanks to Brian here, get lean. You get an additional 5% off. So you can get a uh, double discount and we have a double your money back guarantee on all of our products. Um, if something doesn't work, just call us. We'll refund your money. We'll find a different product. Even if it's another company, we want you to wake up and feel good. Our products are just a very small part of the toolkit that we provide in our coaching program, our one-on-one stuff in our group coaching community. And we would love to uh, we just want to help people get feel good because I know what it's like to wake up and not feel good and live in fear. And we don't want that. We want people to get empowered and, um, and learn how to, you know, heal themselves. Cause once they do that, it's really awesome because they say, wow, they get that confidence, that feeling like I did it myself. Like I don't need all these pe- people and have to worry about it. Like I learned, I learned how my body works and I know what makes me feel good. And, and it's just, um, it's just really cool to be a part of those journeys. Hmm. Awesome. Tim. Well, I appreciate you coming on the podcast and sharing, sharing some knowledge with, with us. Um, and yeah, you can, if you find it chemicalfreebody.com, we'll put, we'll put, um, some links in the show notes and, um, and then get lean for that 5% discount. Um, awesome. I appreciate you coming on and, um, yeah, thanks again. Thanks Brian. And, and congratulations on your hundredth episode too. I heard you, you did over a hundred episodes. We just had our hundredth too. So I just thought, I know it's kind of a, a <laughs> landmark yeah. to make it that far. Most podcasters, you know, just don't, they, they start and fizzle. So it's pretty cool that you've, you're obviously committed to doing what you're doing. Um, I'm sure that the people listening to you are getting value and benefit. And um, I just want you to keep doing more of what you're doing, man, and helping people. That's what we need. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, you too. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. I understand there are millions of other podcasts out there and you've chosen to listen to mine and I appreciate that. Check out the show notes at briangrin.com for everything that was mentioned in this episode. Feel free to subscribe to the podcast and share it with a friend or family member that's looking to get their body back to what it once was. Thanks again and have a great day.